top nine Windows commands to nail the tech interview. Number nine. First, it does you no good to know the top nine Windows commands if you don't know how to get into Windows. Let's try that. So if you're in Windows, you click on Start, and you click on CMD, or type CMD, and then you right-click on it and run as administrator. The difference being now you're in an elevated permission. You can do anything you want. A little different than if you're in a regular user or regular permissions. You'll notice that when you have the system 32. That means you're in an elevated prompt. So that command is what? That first command is IP config IP config tells you information about your computer, your domain, and your network. Let's type it again. IP config and there's other variations of IP config. For instance, if you type in IP config and then slash, you're going to get a whole host of commands you can type on your computer. That's going to help you troubleshoot network issues, troubleshoot your interface, see if you have internet. If you're going for a job, and really this is what this video is about, right? The company's going to ask you, well, how would I find out the IP address of a computer. And you're like, uh, I don't know. Well, now you do. You just type IP config slash what? I don't know. Okay, well, let's find out. What would I type? Oh, I'd be slash all because you want to display the full configuration of everything in this computer. Let's do that. So IP config slash all. That's going to tell me all the information about the computer. It's going to tell me the host name, it's going to tell me the DNS, it's going to tell me the type. In some cases you might not have this information, but since my computer is on a domain, a local Windows domain, then, then I have that. It's going to find out, it's going to tell you the MAC address, which is the physical address. It's going to tell you the IP address. In our case it's a um, it's a not a static IP, but a it obtains the IP address automatically, essentially. So it's a DHCP server. So the since this is a virtual box, I have it set to be virtual. I have it set to give it IPs. This is why it uh, has its own IP address. It's generated its own. It's going to tell you the subnet mask, and it's going to tell you the lease time, meaning I've this has been up since X amount of time. The lease obtained, lease expires. Usually what happens is, in network terms, you'll have like a, a certain amount of time where the interface will like refresh, and it's typically how it works. On your router, it usually you can set that. It's a manual setting. Sometimes I think it's set to like 10, 10 hours, 10 minutes, something like that, but you can set it. The other thing you're going to say is, see is your uh, DHCP, DHCP server, which is going to, hand again, hand out your IP addresses. And it's also going to give you, like for instance, this is a static IP here, or sorry, this is still DHCP rather, sorry. But this is going to be like your DNS server. Oh, no, I, I was mistaken actually. This is not, this is statically assigned actually. But anyway, this is going to be your DNS server. Now, your DNS server is something that goes out to the internet. Probably sometimes you've seen on your router at home, you've seen, say, like your IP address, and then you've seen like this thing called a, D8, a DNS server. Well, the DNS server is a domain name server that lets you access the internet. Usually Google's is 8.8.8.8. You've probably seen that before. And if you haven't, that's what it is. So don't want to overwhelm anybody here, but the main thing to take away from this is, hey, um, how do I get the IP address of a computer? I just want to know. How do I do that? I don't know. First time in computers? I don't know. How do I do that? Oh, IP config slash all. If you want to remember this type, you just remember this way. Say internet protocol configuration or IP configuration. Okay. 
Interesting. It's kind of weird. Okay. Number eight. Somebody might ask you to say, go to a change directory. They might say, should tell me, customer might, you know, interview person might say, how do I go in and how do I, how do I go to another folder? I want to be able to do that. How do I look at something, you know? Um, so the first thing you do, there's a thing called change directory. So it's CD and there's really nothing there, right? So CD is change directory. And what that means is I'm going to basically just move from one folder to the other. So if I'm going to look and see my, uh, I'm going to CD, I'm going to do CD slash, or I want to, I want to go backwards, I'm going to do CD dot dot, I'm going to go back one. So I'm going to, what you're going to see is I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go from system 32 back to windows by, by, do, by doing this command. Okay. And if I want to go all the way back to the C drive, I would do CD slash. So now I'm there. If I want to go forward, here's what I would do. I would CD slash something. I can put I can push tab. Now how do I how do I know what's there, right? How do I know what's in there? Well you can type DIR, which stands for directory. And that's going to tell you what's in there. Okay. I see Dallas Library, I see all these other things. I was is my uh, computer here, which I have other things on, but what you're going to see is you're going to see a list of folders that you can go into, if you will. So change directory. Let's pick one. Now, let's pick, say, Dallas Library. So I'm going to type D-A-L-L, -L, and you can tab it over. You just push the tab button, which is under the one, basically. Or you can just type the whole thing out, if you like. Tab it through. Push Enter. Oh, I'm in. So once you're in... I'm, basically what I've done is I went from the C drive into another folder gone forward you know if you want to break this down if you want to, if you want to think of it as something similar like a house in a room so the C drive is your house Dallas library is a room and if you want to go inside another room well I want to know what's in that what's inside Dallas room or Dallas library so I'm going to type in let me give you a little real estate here. I'm going to type in dir, which is directory. What's inside there? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Oh, okay. I see a folder. I see this. I see that. Okay, cool. Well, let's see if we can find out. Let's type in folder. CD. I'm going to change directory. I'm going to do folder. Okay. Now I'm in. Oh, I'm in there. Now let's find out what's inside there. All these other files. So why would I use this? What's the reason behind this, right? Sometimes what happens is sometimes you need to troubleshoot. You need to be able to move directories or you need to be able to go into another directory. And you want to demonstrate that you know what this means. And if you want to go back to the end, CD slash, you're going to go back to the beginning. Sometimes you need to be able to look at certain files in here, maybe be able to tell individuals, hey, there's a folder here, there's a file here without actually going in and browsing via the Windows uh, Explorer. It's very helpful in troubleshooting really anything, to be honest with you. It's um, very helpful when you're going in, for instance, Commvault. And, and let's just go here in this scenario, right? Commvault. So I'm going to do CD, change directory. I'm going to go to program files, OK, in my case. And I'm going to go CD again. And I already know what this is, so I'm going to do dir. What's in dir directory? Oh, there's Commvault. Well, Commvault's a program that I use, right? And I know that the only way I can do a certain function, a certain troubleshooting function, is for me to go inside of there and, and do this. So I'm going to do cd. I'm going to go Commvault, uh, rather, cd dot dot, go back one, cd, change directory, Commvault. And I'm there. So I'm going to do what is in there. Oh, content store. I need to go in there. CD content store. Okay, what's in there? Oh, I need the base folder, actually, right? Base. Where's base at? Okay, I need the base. Okay, so I'm going to type in base, CD, change directory. I'm going to go base. Okay. 
and what's inside the base folder all these little things there's a lot right by the way since I know what I'm looking for since there's a lot wow that's a lot since I know what I'm looking for okay I'm I know what I'm looking for I'm gonna type CV ping and it's the executable file that does a function for me in this you know uh, for this application what's important about this is sometimes you probably need to use a change directory and to get into this program in order to run something run this this function what are we at number seven okay number seven number seven is how to create a folder okay so that command is mkdir which stands for make directory since I'm in the C drive I can make a make a directory we're gonna name it say make a directory we're gonna call it gratitude 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 okay how do I know it's there I go dir and do I see it? Do I see it? I do see it. So basically what's happened is I created a folder in the C drive. So what would I do this for? What's the reason, right? Why would I do this? Sometimes what happens is you create folders to put stuff in and you want to make it easy on yourself to do it. Plus also it's one of those things a lot of Windows admins don't do because it's real easy just to right click on a folder and create a create something versus doing command prompt so this could be another question they ask you on the interview on this note if we wanted to create a file inside this directory how would we do that okay first things first we're gonna we're gonna just carry on to what we know already so we know how to do change directory so we're gonna change directory into that gratitude folder so we're gonna type CD gratitude now we're in it we're gonna do a dir directory there's nothing inside there obviously right okay so how would I I would actually create something inside there. I want to create. I want to create a folder called. Um, I want to create a text file, right? So something like that. So how would I do that? What would I do? I would type the command. I want to type echo e e c h o, so which stands for like echo 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 echo. Okay. I want to echo something. So I'm going to put some data inside. I'm going to put, say, the data is um, gratitude or grateful grateful okay the word grateful I want to put inside something and the easiest thing I know how to do is how to create a text file so I need to be able to point it somewhere in order to do that you see this this greater than sign right here what that means is almost like it's pointing towards something so you're gonna use the same thing here in this regard it's uh, greater than is that greater than looks like greater than yeah, greater than and I'm gonna create the name of the file or the name yeah the name of the file it's gonna be say grateful dot text grateful dot text okay great I wanna see if it's there I type directory which you already know the command oh and I see it there oh, excellent okay cool so the file is there and here's something you, you you know in order to access that file you can either right click and do browse or you can do it this way which is you type in we get a little real estate here you type in just the word uh, just the text file so if that's grateful you, again you can tab it right and click enter when you do that it's going to open up the text file with whatever it is that's inside so let's type in some text this is really cool. Thank you for showing for the video. I will subscribe, subscribe to your channel and and tell my friends to do so also um, thank you your sub
subscriber. Okay. Okay, so we, we type that in. So we just push X and it's going to close it. It's going to save it first. Do you want to save it? I do. Thank you. So you probably see the size here, right? You see the size before. 11, which is actually the size of the file. So when I do a directory again, the IR, you can see the change because I have more text in there. We type CLS, which is clear screen. Okay. Number five. Okay. Number five is I want to delete that folder. How do I do that? I want to delete the file, the delete folder. How, what do I do? I don't know. So CD, we're going to look at it first, directory. I want to delete that file. I, it's great, thank you, but I want to delete it. Okay. So what's the command? Type DEL, stands for delete, and you name the file name. Grateful. Text. Enter. Ooh, okay. Is it deleted? Let's find out. Type in directory. We're going to see. It's gone. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So on that, I also want to delete the folder called Great Gratitude. Okay. So I want to I want to go back to the C drive. So I'm going to type in, you remember this, right? You're going to do either cd dot dot or cd slash. It's going to bring us back to the C drive. It's going to take us out of the house. We were in the bedroom. We're in the kitchen. We're going to go back out of the house. CD enter. Where are we at? Oh, we're here. We're out of the house. So we're going to look inside the house now and say, what do we see inside the house? Oh, there's a room called gratitude. Well, I want to delete that folder called gratitude. Do I type the command delete? Let's let's figure out. Let's find it. Can I delete it? Are you sure? Oh, I can. Fantastic. Okay. I want to delete that folder called gratitude. Does it going to work? Let's find out. Let's just do dir. And it's still there. Why is it still there? Oh my gosh. Why is it still there? Because it's a directory. That's why it's still there. So how do we delete a directory? The command for that, remember before we did make directory? Remember that? No, we don't want to make a directory. We just type mkdir, mkdir directory here. Somehow my, okay. It's not going to give anything, right? We don't want to make it. We want to delete the directory called gratitude, right? So how do we do that? The command, just like mk, it's a little different. It's R-M-D-I-R. And so R-M-D-I-R, which is, stands for remove directory, and you're going to type the name of the directory. In our case, it's remove directory gratitude. So I push enter, and I do directory again, and I'll see it's not there anymore. It's fantastic. It's, not, uh, it's no longer present. Number four. Number four is, how do I copy a folder or a, yeah, a folder or a file from one folder structure to another? Well, first let's create a couple of folders, right, shall we? So we're going to type in, we already know this stuff, so we know CD, change directory. We're going to make a directory. We're going to make a directory. We're going to call it, we're going to call it, we're going to call it gratitude, gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude. Okay. Now, let's do that. So we're going to go inside that directory. CD. We're going to CD change directory. Again, we're going from the house into the kitchen. Okay. When well, we're in the kitchen, so gratitude is in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen now. We went from the house in the front door to the kitchen. So now we want to create a folder or a file inside that. We're going to do the same thing. Using our command or our example before, we're going to type echo. And we're going to put happy. We're going to echo happy. Happy. And we're going to greater than sign. We're going to put it into text file. We're going to call that text file is great dot text. Okay. Let's see if it's present. Directory. It's there. Okay, great. So I need to be able to create a couple of files because I want to move more than one. So I want to be able to create another file. So I'm going to type echo. 
remember we know how to do this already. I'm going to echo. I'm going to echo a file. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. Say, joy, J O Y. And I'm going to put it into a text file. I'm going to create a text file called fun.txt. Okay. Let's take a look at that. So now I have two text files, fun and great. So I want to be able to move those files to another directory. But before I do that, I want to be able to create that directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory. I'm going to go back out of the house. I'm going to go to the front door from the kitchen. Okay. I'm out of the house. Looking at the house now, I want to create another room, another, another folder. So I'm going to make a directory, MK, we already learned this. Make directory. I'm going to name that directory, I'm going to name that directory super. Okay. DIR. Okay, fantastic. Our folder is now present. Super. Super, super. So we have gratitude and we have super. So I'm going to be able to move files from gratitude to super. How do I do that? So before I can do that, I need to be in the directory. I need to go into the room and to get out of the front door. I need to go in the room, the gratitude room, the kitchen, if you will. So I'm going to do CD gratitude. I'm in the kitchen, right? So I want to be able to move files from one location to the other. Okay, so I'm going to type in move, M-O-V-E, just moving like a moving truck. I'm going to move files from, let's see, let's first find out what the files are, right? So it's fun and great. Okay, so how do we move all this right here? So we'll type in move, M-O-V-E. M-O-V-E, and I'm going to do a question mark, and it's going to tell me what type of things I can I can do, actually. You know, some of the um, type of commands that comes with it. Move question mark, enter, and enter. Um, computer, computer. Oh, move. Let's do slash question mark. There you go. Okay. So it's going to tell me the type of commands I can do with the move uh, move command. So move slash y, move slash dash y. And what you're looking for, what I'm looking for really is this. I want to move it. So move is kind of weird. It's, it's either rename. You can either rename files or you can move. There's also copy. But this we're just going to use move. So moving so move move um, the file into the destination so in our case it's going to be move and we're going to capture everything in that directory so if we notice all of those files anything with the dot text in our case we're going to capture all of that so we want to move all that to the super so we're going to type in um, we're going to type in move star so that's everything dot text and we want to move that to the C drive greater than sign C super okay let's go back one maybe I need to remove this let's go back and see if there okay I need to remove this greater than sign so what's going to happen is it's going to do move anything dot text into the folder called super. Okay. So what's happened is it's moved those files. So we went from the kitchen to the den to the great room. What uh, we we moved those files. Let's go ahead and let's go over to super. Let's see if it's there. So we're going to change directory. We're going to go back out of the house you know from the kitchen out of the house so we're gonna go back into the great room super we're gonna go into that room so we're in the super room now we're in the room 
We're going to take a look at what we have in here. Oh, look at the files are there. Fantastic. Okay. Number six. Number six. Number six is netstat. What is netstat? Netstat is that command that's needed for you to trouble, be able to troubleshoot any network issues. Some of those commands are going to be asked of you in a interview. So what you should take away is this, how you read this, if you will, right? You have your protocol, which is TCP. You have either, it's either TCP or UDP. So the difference between TCP and UDP is this. UDP is like you're sending out information like, hey, how are you? It doesn't expect a response. TCP is like, hey, how are you? And expects an, a response or an acknowledgement. And the local address is your local IP here, port 81. That's what the little dot means. And you're connecting to this on this same, you know, comes this this computer here on port 63914. Just like anything else, you can do netstat slash question mark. And it's going to give lots of knowledge for you. The thing that you can do, which is really cool, actually, is look for specific ports. For instance, you should do you could do a netstat dash in, which is displays address and port numbers in numerical form. You can do a dash o which displays the owning process ID or you can do the dash P which is the protocol another fun one is the dash R which displays the routing table very good tool to have any individual that goes in the interview is probably going to be asked this what is netstat how do I find out what ports are open on a specific computer so let's do dash R, which displays the routing protocol or routing table and here's how you read this here's how you read this you have your two interfaces you have this interface here and you have this interface your IP route table so here's here's how you view this right you have your active routes so your network destination the 10 network we're in the 10 network your net mask so this would be the 10315, your net mask. Okay. On link, what's the interface is going out of? Oh, okay, it's going out of that interface. Great. 168.216.3. What interface is it going out of? And then scroll down a little bit here. You have your persistent routes, which is like how you route basically what the persistent route is is how do I get I have this interface but I want to route out say this interface and that's what the persistent routes are you're not expected to know this as an entry level uh, IT person tech person the one command that's really nice to figure out is if you want to know the ports that are being used for a specific, like port 80 is a common one port 80 is the internet by the way port 80 and port 8080 so you might see that you might see okay well what's this port number port 80 usually is the internet right it's netstat to find a command or rather find an open port so the command is netstat dash na and then we're going to do a, a bracket here which is right underneath your backspace it's like either it's like this but it's not you push shift and then you type that it's like a bracket right and then we're going to type in find and then we're going to type in uh, quotations or what do you call that uh, greater quotations not quotations eh, I forget what that's called anyway you're going to type that in and then you type say 80 port 80 let's just say enter okay so what what's going on is these are active connections on port 80 to be more specific there's a port number that's 8403 that Commvault uses since this is the comserve and I'll just type that in here actually 
Okay, so this will be really helpful in drawing down or troubleshooting what ports are being actively used on your server. And this is really helpful when um, finding out if a port is blocked. That's a common common question. How do I find if ports are blocked on a on a computer or server? Okay, well I would type in netstat and dash na bracket find and what the port number is. Number three, the number three command to use when you're in an interview is called path ping. Maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't. P a t h p i n g. Path ping is allowing it's almost like a it's like a pseudo trace route basically right so let's take a look at it so if you type it in so what's going on is I can path ping I can see the network of a certain uh, in, you know certain uh, traffic so let's let's path ping to our um, to our other server so the IP is 10.0.3.4 Okay, anything else? Any other information? Nope. Okay, let's do that. So it's going to take a while. It's going to do its stuff. It's going to start to figure out what it wants to do. It's performing a trace route to this IP, which is my other server over here, actually. And if you had, say, like between you and, say, this server, there was say five or six routers or switches, if you will, right? It would it would see that it would see the information in between uh, if if it's allowed, basically. So that's what the unique thing about the path ping is for. It's really good. It's a lot better than the trace route, as you can probably see. It tells you really good information, especially if you're on the network. It'll tell you the full qualified domain name of every hop, basically. So it's Essentially what's going on is it's coming from, it's going to this server, which is 10.0.3.4. It's going from my server, which is me, the zero here, to, it would be this server here next, right? And if it was, if it had to go through another hop, it would go through number two, three, etc., etc. And as you could see, it um, ended up talking to the other server so if I it's computing statistics for 25 seconds I push enter again enter again and here's where you see all the information I was talking about right so the hop count hop 0 hop 1 the milliseconds it took, it took to get it so the um, amount of lost traffic or lost bandwidth or lost yeah, lost traffic. The percent is zero percent, of course. This node link, so lost, sent. Um, okay, percentage, and you ended up with a little more information again than you would have on trace route. So this is number three. Number two. The command is well. There's several commands, but it starts off with the word net. N e t you type in net. One in particular command on net, so you can net do a net view, you can do a, a whole host of things. But the one command that's probably critical, or it's probably good to know, and it'll probably help you on your interview actually, and that command is net. Net view or sorry net config sorry net config net config net config okay so net config server is what we're looking after okay so what you're gonna see here is this the reason that that it's called server hidden what's going on is the computer the server is using uh, it's communicating with the Microsoft browser um, to, you know, um, almost like a ping or like a traffic. Hey, um, communicating with the Microsoft browser. And you can actually turn this off, which will actually save you some bandwidth 
um, in your, on your server. So let me show you how to do that actually. And this is some little nice gotcha that you can you can tell your uh, it, person interviewing you. Um, that's really beneficial actually. So the command is. So you're going to type in, of course, net config server. Let me give you a couple. Let me get some real estate here. So the command is net configure server. Let's move it up a little bit. Followed by a slash and then hidden. And then a colon and the word yes. So when I do that, what's going to happen is it's going to change this server hidden to a yes. Okay, command is successful. So let's up arrow and let's just take a look. So before it was no and I did the config server slash hidden and I typed it in again and we're going to see what it looks like now. And as you can see the server has now been hidden which indicates it's not sending that Microsoft traffic browser traffic if you will it's going to save you some some internet so the last command number one this command is really cool it's system info so system info it's going to tell me information about my computer, if you want to know if it's a virtual machine, obviously you can tell by looking around here, but it tells the nice thing information. So for instance, let's take a look at it, right? So it's going to tell me the host name. It's going to tell me the OS number, or sorry, the OS name. It's going to tell me the version. Um, manufacturer, of course, Microsoft. It's going to tell me the install date when I installed it. It's going to tell me, well, model number. In this case, it's a virtual box, so it's going to be virtual box. It's going to tell me a 64 bit, bit or 32 bit. It's going to tell me the BIOS uh, version. It's going to tell me the processor type. It's going to tell me the memory that I have allocated for it. It's going to tell me um, what else is it going to tell me? Obviously, the log, log server or log on to rather. It's going to also tell me the hotfix. So some of the Microsoft patches that have been applied is going to be noted here, as well as your network information cards, your NIC cards, and your IP addresses, and other types of information. So the good thing about this is, is you could you could look at it and you're troubleshooting. So you want to know maybe you want to know the host name or you want to know what what type of computer is it without actually looking in the uh, properties of the computer itself maybe you want to look at the model number what kind of what model name number is this I don't know it's gonna tell you that by going here because maybe you can't visually see it and perhaps it's not even shown on your the, the command or the GUI interface but it'll be shown here so I like to thank everybody uh, for walking through this watching the video these are the top nine um, uh, top nine commands that are going to be used in the interview when you go for your technical interview if you like this video and you want to see more please jump on to my course which is I have two courses one is at get a job in it.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy it's learn backup and restore with Commvault, get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.